I've decided to do a proper allotment update. This is the fruit patch. We've been having loads of raspberries. You can see there's still some on my Glencoe raspberry. And these are the stems for next year. Starting to become really vigorous. Down here, you can see we've got some of the autumn fruiting raspberries starting to come up and produce fruit. Excuse me. I just finished a while ago. I think it was because of the hot weather. Potatoes looking a bit bedraggled. One has died down already, which I don't think it was supposed to, but maybe I got my varieties mixed up. They're looking a little bedraggled, but there is definitely potatoes in there. And some more here. I've moved them away from the greenhouse because I don't want them anywhere near my tomatoes. Nice section of chard in my raspberry patch. Not supposed to be there don't have the heart to dig it up. The fruit bushes are all finished now. The birds got beat me to the uh, gooseberries but we got, managed to get a lot of quite a few black currants, red currants and white currants. So I've taken all the netting off so that the plants can just breathe and any pest can be taken and stuff like that. Little cherry trees got some cherries on. Quince. We still have quinces. You can see my plum tree is loaded. I'm going to be dealing with that shortly. Just potted those on. They came from the bedroom. As I might have mentioned, I've got a few issues with germination of carrots and parsnips this year. But we do have a row of parsnips that I transplanted in Lural holders. The carrots got slugged. This beetroot at the back, it's doing quite well. A close up of that. You can find it, there we are. Mixed varieties and colours there. I'm just letting the nasturtiums do their thing because they attract the slugs and then I can pick the slugs off and dispose of them. And also it's pretty for the pollinators. <laughs> There's some honeybees there. My lavender. And a bumblebee. They're loving this. Far too fast for me. <laughs> if you heard that, then one whizzed right past my nose. I don't think they like me staring at them though. For her bed, starting to get a little weedy. But we've been harvesting some herbs. Chive flowers coming on. That, which I thought was a coriander, but I realised upon thinking properly is actually a parsley. Isn't that stunning? That's the Silver Queen thyme. of mixed edible flowers. Fennel's getting a little bit squished by the rhubarb but we'll get to it. The mint absolutely loves this area. Still picking rhubarb. Look at the colour contrast between the rhubarb and the lavender. My sizeable bramble hedge. I'm picking these for like a few days now. And they'll basically go on until the frosts. Look at the size of that one. One thing that's not so good, and I'll show you because this is my nemesis. 
all the bindweed down there. I'm going to have to have a good pulling session with that. Because it will get everywhere if I leave it be. It's the only place it stays on the allotment. But it's really hard to get out because of the brambles. Arm post bin. It's the back side of the lavender and stuff. No one ever gets to see this side and I don't normally. My lavender has decided to stop flowering. Going to see if I can take some seeds from that. Exciting things over this way. Onions. They've done a lot better than I thought they would. I seem to have a, a small to medium sized harvest there. Some of them didn't show at all. I was testing doing them through the middle and it seems to have, and it doesn't seem to have caused any problems except some got lost under it and the slugs did lurk, but they didn't bother the onions. I've just taken it off now so they can get coloured up and hardened up and for harvesting. I'm going to leave them as long as possible to get as big as possible, but look at that whopper in the middle. Some more chard. These are an experiment. Some more chard. We have some trombocino squash here. I decided to grow it up this frame. I moved everything round. They're looking a bit bedraggled in there, the lettuce, because they were just planted. But And that's another type of squash, one of the surviving ones. I can't remember what type it is, but hopefully it will decide to stay alive. That's a courgette. It is going to be planted, it's not going to stay up there. My pom-poms. <laughs> they lovely. Of course, now I smell of leek. This is the courgette plant that's doing the business. It's got a baby one there. And I have had two more. So it's only just starting, but I'm frankly amazed the slugs didn't take it. They've been quite bad this year. Got some more along here. They're not faring as well. I mean, seriously. This is a slightly disappointing patch because it was corn, and it still is corn, but it's not grown at all. It's been like the ultimate fail this year because first of all the pigeons got it and it's just not growing much. I, you know, it feels like it should be hiding when it sees everyone else's corn. I'm not sure why. I had a similar problem last year, so it must be something I'm doing. But the previous year, it was excellent. So, a bit of a mystery. I know it's not going to do very well under there. I was just giving it a chance to evade the pigeons. I think I'll take that off in a bit. One positive of this bed is there's a frog that lives in it. I don't know where, where it is. I've put pictures on Instagram of the frog. It seems to change its coloration a little bit. It's usually around here somewhere. Probably eating all the slugs. I did put one of the chinchillas old houses down here in case it wanted to sit in it, but it doesn't like me trying to put it in a house. Apparently it likes getting wet. Originally I had the pallet. I think they've been shredded by something. Originally I had a pallet here and the frog was under that, but I don't know where it's gone now. Maybe it's moved on. The problem is, I, the corn I'm going to give up as a loss this year because you need to plant them in a cube and there's not actually enough for that. There's not, So they're not going to be pollinated. And also they're tiny, they're not going to support corn. Because of that, because of that and the pigeons, we've constructed this. An uber pea frame. 
you keep falling down a little bit, but there's a nice frame structure. It's aluminium, and I've put the EnviroMesh over just to try and prevent the pigeons getting it because they've been a nightmare this year. Also, more charred. I might need to sew some more because they were got too leggy. I wasn't very well, so they got too leggy, and now they're not refusing to hold on to anything. So those are the two slightly dodgy things: my peas and beans and my corn. Except here are some wash too. The surviving peas are doing quite well now. So we have these. I mean, there's not a huge amount you can get from three plants, but <laughs> it's a nice little snack when I'm down here. See, so you've got a bit of black fly. Everyone's been saying the black fly's been really bad this year, and I found that as, that as well. And also aphids. So white fly, green fly, black fly, white fly, all been awful. That's why I'm doing so much with the ladybirds. Some lettuce planted the other day. They came in a pot, so you know, I just needed to plant it. Did the end one today. Another trombo that I'm tucking them in everywhere because I've got loads of them. And I think that brings us to this bed where we're going to be doing some stuff now. Um, it's for the sweet potatoes. You see the sweet potatoes, there's ochre, and there's tomatillo. Ooh, I forgot my sweet peas. They survived. I didn't think they were going to. Um, and they've started growing and they've started flowering. So yes, that's a positive as well. I didn't kill them. And we've got some nice in the little messy corner of things. Some flowers. And the greenhouse, which I'll cover in another video. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye for now.